Did you know that we can remove brain tumors through the nose? No way. Actually, we can. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 40-year-old man who came to my office at complaining of headaches and problems with his vision. He thought maybe he just needed a new pair of glasses because he was 40, and you definitely lose your vision after 40, right? Well, kind of. It's common after 40 to develop something called presbyopia, where you have trouble focusing at close distances, and you have to pull things a little bit further away to see. The optometrist noted that he was having trouble with his peripheral vision. That doctor ordered an MRI of the brain that was done without and with contrast, and it showed a brightly enhancing lesion within the pituitary gland. Pituitary is a small gland behind your nose that sits at the base of your brain. It's responsible for releasing different hormones or chemicals that help control different bodily functions. It secretes a variety of different hormones, including those that support reproductive function, growth, and our thyroid. Technically speaking, it's actually a gland that's attached to the brain, but we still consider tumors of the pituitary to be brain tumors. Tumors that grow within our pituitary gland can technically cause disruption of a variety of these different types of functions. There's two main types of pituitary tumors those that secrete hormones and those that don't secrete hormones. We can also stratify them based on their size. If they're under 10 millimeters, we typically call them microadenomas. And if they're over 10 millimeters, we call them macroadenomas. Non-functioning macroadenomas are twice as common. And 10% of all brain tumors are these types of tumors. So they're actually pretty common. In fact, some researchers say that up to 20% of us can have these types of tumors, but they're often asymptomatic, so they're never found. They can happen at any age, but they're most common to be found in people in their 30s and 40s. Let's look back at that MRI. I'm gonna look at the sagittal view where he's facing forward and we're looking at pictures through the brain going this direction. The nasal cavity is right here, and this gray material here is the brain and this avidly enhancing large white mass is the pituitary tumor. Now, what about the vision? The visual pathway in our brain can be quite complex, as you can see. We interpret vision through a sensory pathway in which is detected in the back of the eye, and it relays through the optic nerve through all these visual pathways that are ultimately connected to the occipital part of our brain. The occipital lobe contains our visual cortex. What the heck does that mean? It's the part of our brain that processes that information. It goes from the eyes all the way to the back of the brain. And if there is any compression or interruption of this pathway at any point, it can cause trouble with your vision. I discussed the anatomy of where the pituitary gland is located, but right above the pituitary gland lies our optic chiasm. And the optic chiasm is a part of our visual pathway. If it's compressed in any way, it can cause decreased peripheral vision. That doctor understood that, ordered the MRI, and helped us make the diagnosis. Remember that medicine is a team sport and we all play roles on the healthcare team. The doctor knew that there was a problem, ordered the right testing, and got them in the right hands. We've done a previous video on a prolactinoma, which is a small secreting microadenoma, but this is the first video where I've explained a pituitary macroadenoma. And the good news is it's completely benign. Treatment really depends on the size of the tumor, if it's secreting or non-secreting, and the health of the patient. Depending on all those factors will depend on what treatment is recommended for the patient. Macroadenomas that are causing compression of the optic chiasm in a normal healthy adult almost always need surgery. Luckily, most of the time, it's not an open brain surgery like this. We can actually do it like this. Mean that we stick an instrument in here to get to our brain? This is a really great informative video that I got from the Barrow Neurological Institute. You can see where the surgeon places a lighted endoscope through the nose to access a part of the brain called the sphenoid sinus. It's located in the back of the nasal pathways right here, right beside the pituitary gland. This surgery is called an endoscopic transphenoidal tumor resection. We use an endoscope to penetrate through the sphenoid sinus to access the brain. This is an alternative to opening up the skull to access the brain in that way. So here you see the patient that's lying supine or face up on the table, and the surgeon can prep and drape around the nasal cavity. Here you can see what's happening on the patient, and here you can see through the camera itself. The camera is advanced through the sinuses, nasal mucosa is elevated and separated to expose the sphenoid bone itself. Just like any other sinus, it's an air-filled space that's located behind the nose. 
And here you can see the surgeon using a drill to remove that part of the bone. Then we can enter the part of the skull where the pituitary gland and the tumor sits, called the cella tersica. That thin bone can then be drilled away to expose the cavity where the tumor is contained. Once the tumor is exposed, the surgeon can see under high magnification and carefully remove the tumor and peel it away from other critical structures. This includes the optic chiasm like we talked about earlier, as well as the carotid arteries that sit on either side of the cella tersica. And imagine that this is a very delicate surgery. Now, once the tumor is removed, the surgeon can then flat back over the tissue and sometimes other additional material is used to help close that, including a fat graft. These can be done by trained neurosurgeons and also can sometimes be assisted by an ENT doctor. This is typically a very safe operation, but just like any surgery, there are risks involved. That can be damage to the normal pituitary gland or damage to the surrounding structures, in addition to a CSF leak through the nose. That's why it's extremely important to follow the doctor's directions after this type of surgery. These are extremely slow growing tumors and often surgery is curative. We will usually do routine screening MRIs on a regular basis to make sure the tumor doesn't grow back. In our patient's case, I referred him to a specialist that performed this surgery and he had a gross total resection of the tumor and did extremely well. He had no complications with his surgery and regained all of his vision. Another case of patient focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.